Hey guys, it's Ed Bud here, and you found me in real party mood today as we've hit 3,000 subscribers. I'd like to thank each and every one of you who subscribed so far. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down here in the bottom corner. It really does mean a great deal to me that there are so many subscribers already, even though the channel's still in its infancy, and I thank all of you. I'm glad you're enjoying the content on the channel, and I hope my enthusiasm comes through for those lovely shoes, but also for running in general. So to celebrate, it's time for another running shoe giveaway. I have put the shoe in question to a vote over in the community section of the site, so head on over there and you can cast your vote. I'm kind of happy to go with whatever shoe people are kind of interested in, but I do have a bit of a price ceiling of about 130 British pounds. Over on the community section of the site, the vote's been running for, I think it's probably about 12 hours at the time of recording this video. The Nike React Infinity Run is currently top of that voting poll with 36%. The Evo Ride from ASICS, I believe, has about 22%, and that's closely followed by the Saucony Kinvara 11, which I think has got about 20%. If you want to take part, please head over to the community section of the YouTube site and cast your vote. I'll have some information at the end of the video on how you can enter the competition, so please stay tuned towards the end of the video. Bit of a bumper kind of video today, there's loads of stuff that I need to get through. Just want to say thanks to Wendy Jenkins for making me this fantastic beanie hat, or a toque as I now know it's called, over in Canada. I think it's even better with the green piece on the front here. My wife's stolen the other one, so uh, I begged Wendy to make me a new one and she delivered. It's fantastic. Thank you, Wendy. As I say, I'm in real party mood, and when you are in party mood, you need Ross Abbott's I Love a Party. It's got obviously the classic Ross Abbott hit Atmosphere and I think it was the only other hit actually from this uh, this album, which is All Night Holiday. Please don't go and listen to this album, guys. It really is terrible. In terms of better music though, this is the first album actually that I ever bought, the first 12 inch album. It's by Bomb the Bass and it's called Enter the Dragon. This dates right back to 1988. It's a big, big hit, uh, obviously Beat This, you probably would have heard that before. I think the uh, guys over in America as well will be familiar with that one. I think they had a couple of big hits from this album actually. Really is great. Um, Tim Simeon was the producer and kind of mastermind behind the album. Do check it out, some really great early dance music from the very late 80s. Coming up over the next week or so, I've got a kind of Q&A video. There's lots of questions that have been coming in recently from the viewers and I want to try and answer as many of them as I possibly can in about 10 minutes. So do stay tuned for that a little later in the week. So on to my main kind of subject of the day. I want to do a comparison between the New Balance 1080 V10 and the Nike React Infinity Run. One of the big questions viewers have got at the moment is which is kind of better for those kind of easy days, those kind of long runs where you're working at a slightly more sedate pace and kind of eating up the miles. Which of these two shoes is better? Lots and lots of people have been asking me. Certainly myself, I've made a very conscious decision recently when I get to run those easy miles, I'm gonna run them much easier than I have been before. So I've been experimenting with more cushion shoes and a bit to find out kind of what the best option is for you runners. So certainly these two shoes are in a similar price point, the Infinity Run and the 1080 V10 come in at around about £130 each. So let's get on with the shootout. So I'll start off with upper. God, this one's seen a bit of action, this one. It's certainly a little thicker on the Infinity Run. Uh, the fly knit upper here, it's definitely a bit thicker, kind of less flexible, I would suggest. It's certainly got less shape to it all round. I keep kind of looking at that advert that Nike have put out where the shoe's kind of, the upper's collapsed and stuff, and it kind of really does fit the shoe to me it really does uh, give quite a uh, transparent view of the shoe the material over the top of the infinity runs just that little bit more coarse i think the 1080 is certainly softer it feels much more plush kind of feels a little bit more finished i think there's obviously loads more eyelets here a whole array of them rather than on the infinity run you're just kind of stuck with what you got you can kind of rejig the lacing here, reconfigure it. I know a couple of other runners um, and followers on Strava have mentioned that they've experimented with relacing the shoe in a slightly different way to achieve a better fit. You can even use those kind of top eyelets here to do a runner's knot if you so desire. I suggest sort of forefoot, midfoot lockdowns far easier to achieve on the 1080 V10 than it is on the Infinity Run. But many runners um, and commenters have suggested that isn't the case, me included. 
I found there's just kind of too many eyelets really. I'm kind of constantly messing around with the tightness of the shoe over the top of the forefoot. I kind of never seem to be happy. I'm always sort of tinkering. I kind of feel like I'm one of those kind of petrol heads, you know, mess around in my car, kind of get a little bit of performance out of it. Like one of those kind of computer nerds who's kind of never happy with their setup and they're always tinkering around trying to get a couple more frames per second. I think part of the problem is those laces. I've got a bit of a pet hate about the laces on New Balance shoes. They're just too elastic. These are the ones that I got from the Rebel and as you can see, there's quite a bit of give to them. So I'm gonna to look to replace the laces in the New Balance 1080 V10. See if that improves things. I think the fit and the lockdown on the Infinity Run really does come down to good sizing. And some again have found that they really just can't get a good lockdown with this shoe. It's got a very minimal lacing scheme here, similar to that on the Pegasus Turbo 2. I do recommend heading to a bricks and mortar store if you're thinking about buying either of these shoes. You'll probably save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. Although heading to a bricks and mortar store to test out running shoes is quite a difficult task these days, certainly if you're in the UK and you live out in the country or something. I found the uppers pretty good in bad weather conditions and both of these shoes. There's been lots and lots of wet and windy weather recently here in the UK and both shoes have worked out pretty well for me. The Infinity Run does pretty well in moisture, it tends to vent it out pretty quickly, although the 1080 V10 is a little bit more of a sponge, certainly in the tongue sort of area where it can sort of absorb some of that moisture and it kind of sticks around in there for a little while. Although in fairness, the worst shoe for that that I've tried recently has actually been the Pegasus 36 Shield. That shoe really doesn't smell great now. More on that soon though. In terms of midsole and outsole, I think perhaps I'd err towards the Infinity Run. I kind of find the midsole in this shoe a lot more to my liking it's cushioned, it's responsive, and it's a little bit more versatile, I feel, than the one in the 1080 V10. Though, I'm gonna stop myself there and say, hang on, this is a kind of longer, easier mile kind of comparison. That midsole on the 1080 V10 is a little bit more kind of absorbent, a little firmer, a little less cushioned than that in the Infinity Run. I did find kind of over about 13 miles that this shoe stuck to bottom out a little bit in terms of its midsole. And I think perhaps the 1080 might be a little bit more consistent in terms of how it feels over longer miles. I think there's initially more pop in the Infinity Run and the 1080 V10 can feel perhaps a little less exciting, but I think it will come into play as the miles increase. In terms of the outsole, the Infinity Run's got a far more aggressive rubber pattern here. I found over 110 miles, there's almost no degradation to that outsole pattern whatsoever. I'd like to say the same for the 1080 V10. We're already getting a little bit of wear here at the front. And what I find is that mud and kind of debris just gets sort of caught up in the small spaces between the sections of the outsole. I found that reduced traction actually quite a bit, certainly in these wet conditions. That side, neither of these two shoes is really aimed at sort of use on trail really, or extremely wet grass or those type of conditions. They're mainly road hog sort of shoes and I don't want to punish the 1080 V10 just quite yet. It's still very early in the testing phase. Purchasing a shoe just for sort of longer runs or easier miles might not really be economically viable for all runners, certainly if you're on a budget. So I think versatility always comes into my mind whenever I'm reviewing a shoe. I found the 1080 V10 to just have a little bit less pop, really. I think it's a little less versatile if you're aiming at doing some faster paces. It could be as part of your long run that you want to incorporate a few quicker miles in there, and I didn't really feel that this one wanted me to do that. It felt I was having to put a little bit more effort in than I normally would do to reach some higher paces in the 1080 V10. I think I'd have to give the nod in terms of versatility to the Infinity Run. I just think it's a little easier to pick up the pace. I don't know if it's something to do with that kind of rocker action, but there's certainly more pop in this midsole to me, even after 100 odd miles. So the Infinity Run gets it for versatility. So where I've been looking at these two shoes and kind of weighing them up a little bit as to which is best, I think I'd probably advise you to go for the Infinity Run. I think as an easier recovery type shoe, or one for perhaps some longer miles, if you're perhaps going up to 14, 15 miles, perhaps that could be ideal really if you're doing half marathon training. I think that might be the one to go for. 
But as I said, please do try them out in a bricks and mortar store if you can. So it got me thinking about which other shoes might be useful and fit in with this kind of shootout. I uh, firstly thought about the Asics Glide Ride. Though it's a little heavier, it's a little more expensive than these two shoes. And some might not really like the very high stack height that's featured within that trainer. Maybe the Rincon? I hear conflicting things about the Rincon. I found it as a good sort of mid-pace kind of daily trainer. Some people like using it for much faster miles and then other people just find it's much better as a kind of longer mileage shoe. It's really weird, it just seems to sit in different places for different people. I found the Rincon a nice, cheap, good value shoe. It's nicely cushioned, but perhaps a little narrow in the arch area for everybody. I certainly used to lace the shoe so it was a little looser at the very front in the toe box area. Those runners with wider feet though, simply the Rincon isn't going to work for you. Perhaps the Beacon might be an option from New Balance. I know uh, I've got the Beacon 1, which I really enjoy for those kind of easier miles. But the Beacon 2's out, it's a little bit different. I think the heel's a lot more similar to the one in the 1080 V10. I think you've certainly got to look at that as a less plush, lighter, and perhaps a little cheaper version of the 1080 V10. Certainly the foam is very similar. I don't think you should leave out either the Pegasus 36. This is a really great shoe, a very versatile shoe. I think you could take it right up into those sort of longer miles if you wanted to. Weight's pretty reasonable. Traction, fantastic. I've worn this outsole on all sorts of different terrains, even snow. Certainly it's nice and breathable in the upper, decent lacing configuration. Very comfortable shoe. And pretty cheap as well now. So, shootout over. Here's some information now how to enter the new running shoe giveaway. Four steps to enter in the running shoe giveaway and here they go. So firstly, number one, ensure you subscribe to the channel and you hit the bell for notifications. Number two, make sure you share this video with your good friends and buddies. Number three, you must comment below and let me know what part of the globe you're watching from. And number four, most important, you need to email me at edbudshoetube at gmail.com. I'll place it up on the screen as well. Within that email, you need to let me know your YouTube username and you need to answer me this. If you could go running with any living celebrity, who would it be and why? Once all the entries are in, I'll draw one out, which I think is probably the best, and you'll receive a brand spanking new pair of running shoes. Is there anything better in the world? I'll email you back on the email address that you use to enter the competition to get your shoe size and your shoe selection. I'm going to count all entries that I receive up to midnight on February the 15th. So that's UK time midnight, so that'll be about six hours previous is CST time. So do make sure you get your entries in in time. Any that I receive after that, I will not put into the competition. This competition is open to anybody on the globe. If you want to enter, regardless of where you are, you're very welcome. So please make sure you follow those four steps. Very, very important. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and you click like on the video. Share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.